Hey everybody, this is Angela from State of Puzzling. I wanted to take this time to start talking to you about frames. Those of you who know, um, for the 30 years or so, I've been a puzzle collector, curator, and I'm also a framer. And then over the years, I've really learned uh, what are my best uh, types of frames to use for my puzzling and how to go about framing my puzzles. Um, I've had many of my puzzles in frames um, for, I don't know, you know, over 20 years, easily over 20 years. The frames, you know, pretty much hold up and I will come through and take a look at them. I'll repair them when I have to, you know. Um, and so I wanted to really start talking with you about my puzzle framing. This year I will do two framing sessions. I call them framing sessions, which is about a weekend. And in each weekend, I will frame up probably about 12, easily about 12 to 20 puzzles. And so I would say over the years, you know, I've been able to really learn a lot of things about frames and especially the frames that, that are really m more suitable um, for puzzles. So this is an example of a wooden frame um, I don't use wooden frames anymore. <laughs> this one is, this this puzzle actually is under repair. It's one of my puzzles that I will be repairing. And I'll show you why I don't like wood frames anymore. <laughs> um, they splint, <laughs> they splinter. You know, so this this tends to happen over time. And I think that this this particular wood frame is actually pretty good, but like I said, I don't like the splintering that you sometimes get on them. I don't really like using the, um, I think this is called a sawtooth hanger. I really am not a big fan of using these as well. And I don't like the fasteners. Sometimes you get plastic, you get metal fasteners in there. What happens with puzzles, um, when you're using these fasteners, a lot of times, it's really about the amount of space that you have from the front to the back because you have to hold the puzzle itself and you have to hold an appropriate backing. For this particular puzzle, it has an archival um, cardboard, but that cardboard is pretty thin. This is an 18 by 24. Um, it's barely, barely uh, suitable for this puzzle, but I don't recommend this kind of a setup. I think over time it's going to be wrought with with um, you know potential damage to the puzzle. It does pass my corner test. Usually, what I do is I like to hold up the corner. Um, I do this in my puzzles as well, right? Those of you who know my my pickup test, which is holding up the corner of the puzzle to test the interlocking. Well, I test frames the same way. I hold up the corner, and I just see if there's any warping. On that frame and that that frame is pretty solid okay so this this frame is actually pretty solid the front is a plexiglass it is not an archival grade plexiglass and i can tell because i have some i have some um uh discoloration going on in, the, in this glass. So I'm gonna have to replace the glass as well. I'm going to replace the frame because I no longer use the wooden frames. And you know, you can see kind of what happened. You get the little nicks going on here. You know, and they have the wood markers, right? You come in and you spot it and all of that. And that, you know, it's okay, but I've definitely seen, um, you know, better frames now. And so this one is kind of under repair. You can also see that some pieces have dislodged. I talk about that in the other video, why I don't use puzzle glues anymore. <laughs> and so this one will uh, be under repair. But let me show you another example. Okay, here is another example of a puzzle that I did late 80s. And this is when I really knew very, very little about um, framing. I think this is probably one of my, one of my earlier framing examples. The frame itself is not as sturdy. You can see the, look at the warping here. Let's see if I can show it to you. This thing warps quite a bit. And let's see if I can show, yeah. I think you get a good, a good look at the warping on that. <laughs> okay, so it doesn't pass my warping test, which means the frame itself is not sturdy enough 
to hold this puzzle. So the material on the frame itself is really not, not as sturdy to hold this puzzle. Also, um, the backing, let's flip this guy over. And you can see here. So I used a really, really cheap cardboard on this puzzle. It was kind of like an art board, basically, not archival grade. And you can and and you can see these kind of um, you know, this particular frame came with these hooks, and then you put your nail through there, you know, the nail is on the wall, and then you hook that onto the wall, but they just not appropriate for puzzling. You can see what's, you can see the buckling that's happening there. So the backing is completely wrong on this. It's just not sturdy enough. Um, it's a very thin paper and you can see all the spacing. You see the spacing from the, the front of the puzzle all the way to the back of the puzzle. Look at all the spacing in here. So you really don't want to have that when you're backing your puzzles, you want the puzzles to be as snug as possible in that frame, <laughs> snug as possible. And so, and I'm trying to do this with one hand folks. So, <laughs> but, and see, you can see here, see what happens here. You have all this spacing in here, a lot of spacing going on in here. See, so the puzzle is actually, the weight of the puzzle is actually sagging through the back and because that backing is so weak, it's it's very thin, the puzzle has actually dropped through the, the frame encasing. Okay, so this is just not appropriate. I will repair this one by changing the entire thing out. The puzzle itself needs a little bit of repair as well. Um, and I talk about this in the other video, why I do not use glues anymore. So you can actually see you have pieces that are coming, starting to come up as compared to this, right? So this is what it should look like. And then you start this gapping going on. And this is really what tends to happen. You see the spacing in there. And because that backing is very weak, eventually this will drop right through. And so this one will be repaired as well. So we're gonna repair this one. I'm gonna repair the puzzle first. Uh, using my temp liner. So we'll stabilize that puzzle first. And then we're going to give it a good solid backing. I use foam core and I recommend using an archival foam core. And then we're going to switch, uh, swap out the frame and then we're going to use an, um, an archival plexiglass on this one. This is Angela from State of Puzzling. Happy puzzling, folks. Goodbye for now.